We met here before, my name is Michael Thurlow, my wife Nola. We wandered up the road from Dakabin, Kalanga, where I helped serve at uh, Rivers there. It's been an exciting few weeks. A few weeks ago I uh, was here and I started a sermon series around the person of Elijah and so I thought why not continue that on and uh, thank you for your encouraging words and your warm welcome and your encouragement as we meet around God's word this morning. So it's Elijah part two and my message has the title Faith, Power and Miracles. But let us bow for a moment of prayer. Father God, I thank you that you are indeed a God of power, a God of miracles, as we put our faith and hope and trust in you. Lord, strengthen us, lead us and guide us. Bless this church community, I pray. Lord, may they hear from you. May they seek to serve this community and one another, glorifying you. Thank you, Lord, that we indeed are the church of Christ. You are our hope and our salvation our Lord and our Saviour. Bless this time as we open your word and, and share together and take my thoughts this morning, Lord, and may they honour you here in this place. And may they be a word of encouragement and hope for us all. In Jesus' name, Amen. Friends, God wants all of us, all of our worship, all of our adoration, all of our focus, He wants to be number one in our life. The first commandment is this, you'll have no other gods before me. When Jesus walked the earth, he said, love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. God wants you and I to be devoted to him. What Satan tries to do is to turn our hearts away from God and feel and wants us to fill ourselves with false gods and false teaching and to lose our way. A key thought for us this morning, false gods promise what only the true God provides. I'm sure you would agree money becomes a false god for many people. It does not deliver what it promises. If you have enough money, you'll be happy we're here. Well, that might be okay, but if you discover you're terminally ill, no amount of money will prolong your life. Well, maybe you can have some extra treatment, do some extra things, be a bit more comfortable, but sadly, eventually, one day, you'll die. Friends, money does not buy happiness. But as my son likes to remind me, Dad, I've never seen an unhappy person on a jet ski. <laughs> We have lots of things, lots of pressures, lots of things invade our life. During Elijah's time, many people were worshipping false gods. Baal and Asherah were two of the most popular gods which people worship. So today we're looking at 1 Kings, it's chapter 18 in the Old Testament. It's been about three years now and the wicked, evil king Ahab goes and he sees Elijah. We pick it up at verse 17 of 1 Kings 18. When he saw Elijah, he said to him, Is that you, you troubler of Israel? I have not made trouble for Israel, Elijah replied, but you and your father's family have. You have abandoned the Lord's commands and have followed the Baals. No, it's not me that has made trouble, Elijah says. You've got it all wrong. You've put up false gods before the one true God. You have brought this on yourself. You have decided to reject God and to turn God's people away. <coughs> Many people worship and serve false gods these days. Material possessions, your house, your money, your image, your hobbies. Today, a simple question for us. What are the false gods you serve? What are the false gods I serve? What things do we put before the one true God? What do I put before the one true God? Sadly, a number of years ago, it was all about the ministry. Consumed by programs and processes, it became overwhelming. It was about serving the ministry more than about serving the God who I was supposed to be serving and honouring. 
people and programs can become very consuming. But let us fix our eyes on God and remember to focus on Him. Because of the people that were in my life a few years ago, it was all about success and all about who you were and how great you were and even how spiritual you were by the number of things that you had. But friends, it's what's inside you that counts, isn't it? Not what you have. It's about what's inside and what comes out and what are you projecting to the world and who you're serving and loving and following. It's about what you do with your hands. It's about your character. It's about being loving and compassionate and kind. It's about what is spurred on because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Not a flashy car, not a big house, not a pool, not a home theatre room. Let us not get trapped by false gods because they fail to promise and they fail to deliver what the only true God can. Faith, hope and love. So Elijah comes and he steps into this situation and he says basically the people have to stop wavering. They have to stop moving back and forth between the one true God and the false gods. They need to make a choice. Elijah says, we're going to have a contest. We're going to have a showdown. We're going to have the main event. We're, we're going to have a contest to see whose God is the one true God. And so in 1 Kings 18, 19 to 21... Elijah says, Now summon the people from all over Israel to meet me on Mount Carmel and bring the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But sadly, the people said nothing. How long? How long? This is Elijah's cry. How long? If God is God, follow him. If Baal is God, follow him. If Elijah was standing before us this morning, he would say the same thing. Make up your mind. Who are you going to follow? Don't say that you follow God, then run over here and reject Him. Don't say that you follow Him only when it suits you. Oh God, hear my prayer, but I'll do what I like. Oh God, keep me out of hell and in heaven, but I'll only serve you when it suits me. Are we for God or not? Are we serving Him or not? Are we following Him or not? Quit praising God on Sunday and then curse Him on a Monday. Don't be a Christian on a Sunday and a heathen on a Monday, claiming Christ and then living like you don't even know Him. If Elijah was standing before us, he would say to me and he would say to you, make a choice. If that false God is so important to you, then go all the way. Hurt people, cheat and steal, ruin your life, ruin your marriage. Follow him because his promises are empty. Stop fooling yourselves by pretending you follow Jesus Christ when your life doesn't show it at all. Let us not mock God. But if Jesus Christ is our one true God, your Lord and Saviour, follow him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. Be committed to him daily and follow him, honour him, serve him, worship him, rejoice with him. Be the hands and feet of Christ to those around you. Who's got a big old family Bible in their home? Anybody? You know, that big heavy thing that gathers dust? And, oh, look, it's a Bible! We used to have one in my home many years ago. 
A little boy opened the big old family Bible and he was fascinated as he looked at the different pages and the print and, and the old paper. And as he turned the pages, a leaf fell out and landed on the ground that had been pressed between the pages. With great excitement, he grabbed the leaf and run, ran up to his mum and said, Mummy, mummy, look what I found. I found Adam's pants. <laughs> now, I don't think the Bible was that old, but... There you go. 1 Kings 18, 24. Up on the screen for us. Then you call on the name of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire. He is God. Then all the people said, what you say is good. So they took the bull given them, verse 26, and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Oh, Baal, answer us, they shouted. But there was no response. No one answered. And they danced around the altar they had made. Nothing happened. God with a little G was silent. They called out to him. They danced around. Then Elijah has an idea in verse 27. So at noon, Elijah began to taunt them, if you know the story. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a god. Perhaps he's deep in thought or busy or travelling. Maybe he's sleeping and must be awakened. Where is your god? There's an interesting thing here that, that well, maybe he's busy. Maybe he's, he's off asleep. If he's such a great god, you need to wake him up. You need to get his attention. And they, there's hundreds of people here. You can picture it. There's probably over a thousand odd people here. They're singing, they're dancing, they're calling on Baal, they're, they're cutting themselves, there's blood. There's, it's, it's a spectacle. Amen? Yeah. All before this false God. Sally, some of us have been dancing for that false God for many years. Let's not dance to the tune of the false god anymore. Because false gods promise what only the true God provides. False gods promise only what the true God provides. And then it's Elijah's turn. In 1 Kings 18, 36 to 39, the sacrifice is there. They've covered it with water. They've dug a ditch. There's all the wood there. It's all ready to go. And Elijah quietly and faithfully comes before that sacrifice and calls out to the one true God. Friends, God hears our call. God hears our cry. At the time of the sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, O Lord God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that the people will know that you, O Lord, O God, that you are the turning their hearts back again. Verse 39, 38 and 39. Then fire fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, the soil, and also licked up the water that was in the trench. The fire of God fell and consumed the sacrifice. For hours, they've been dancing and calling upon the false god, but no reaction. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. A simple prayer and fire fell. And quickly, they all realized that the Lord, He is God. That He is the one true God. And that's our prayer today. That you'll realize that the Lord, that He is God. <clears throat> that today we'll lay down those things that have held us back. Those things we're serving, those things we're dancing to, are not of God. Let's get a fresh awakening this morning 
that Jesus is Lord, our hope and our Saviour. He has come from heaven. He died upon a cross. He was raised to life for you and I. Let us follow him. Let us worship him. Let us honour him. Let's lay those idols down and serve only the Lord. Who is your God? Who is your Saviour? I pray that is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you. Let's pray. Father God in life, at times we sing and dance to many a tune, and these things are not of you. Lord, help us to fix our hearts and minds upon you, our hope and our salvation. Lord God, we lay things down and we pick things up today. We want to honour you with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength. And Lord, we thank you for that challenge from Elijah, that we will not waver, that we'll be fixed and focused on you, that we'll make the right choice and serve you. Lord, as we move out into a new week, Lord God, may we be your hope. May we be a light of encouragement to somebody. Father God, we serve you. We honour you here in this place. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks, Carol.